Uh, my name. Hello, everyone. My name is Raymond Riley. I'm a professor and director of the Center for Pharmaceutical Oncology at the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Toronto. It is my pleasure to speak to you about our work to develop a new treatment for glioblastoma multiform, or GBM, which is the most common form of brain cancer. We refer to this treatment as a radiation nanomedicine. I'm especially appreciative of the support of the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada, which allowed my team to explore this new idea for treatment of GBM. <clears throat> In my presentation, I will describe glioblastoma multiform or GBM and its treatment. I will then explain the idea for a radiation nanomedicine for treatment of GBM. Then I will review the preclinical studies that my group has performed to study the radiation nanomedicine for treatment of GBM, and finally describe our ongoing and future research. <clears throat> so GBM is the most lethal and unfortunately the most common form of brain cancer. Less than one out of 20 patients diagnosed with GBM will survive five years and most survive less than 18 months. The current treatments for GBM are surgery, local radiation, and chemotherapy with a drug called temozolomide. Despite these treatments, almost all GBMs recur, most often within two centimeters of the surgical margins, indicating that residual tumor remains after surgery. Treatment of recurrent GBM is very difficult and patient survival is less than six months after recurrence. This slide shows our idea for a radiation nanomedicine treatment for GBM. We envision that small particles of gold called gold nanoparticles that are linked to a radioisotope lutetium-177 could be infused into the surgical cavity after the surgeon excises the tumor using a catheter in a technique that is known as convection enhanced delivery. The idea is to treat residual tumor that the surgeon cannot remove in order to prevent recurrence and hopefully improve patient outcome. So firstly, I would like to tell you a little bit about the radiation nanomedicine. The radiation nanomedicine is composed of gold nanoparticles which are tiny particles of gold that are made by boiling a solution of gold uh, and sodium citrate in water, which chemically reduces the gold forming small particles between five and 90 nanometers in size. Just to give you an idea of how small these particles are, you could fit 10,000 gold nanoparticles end to end across the diameter of a single human hair. It is interesting that gold nanoparticles are act not actually gold in color. They range from red to purple, depending on their size. If you watch the video on this slide, as I'll start in a minute, you will see gold nanoparticles being made in my research laboratory. Watch for the red color to form, indicating the, the formation of gold nanoparticles. This will take a couple of minutes here for the red color to form. You can start to see it forming now. and it's getting redder and redder, indicating the formation of gold nanoparticles. You can see that clearly now. So the radioisotope that we link to the gold nanoparticles is called lutetium-177. It is produced in a nuclear reactor at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. By exposing stable lutetium-176, to neutrons in the reactor. The lutetium-176 absorbs a neutron in the reactor and becomes lutetium-177, which is a radioisotope. The lutetium-177 then undergoes radioactive decay 
emitting beta particles, which are a type of electron, converting the lutetium-177 back into a stable element, in this case, an element called hafnium-176. The beta particles emitted by lutetium-177 are the form of radiation that we use to treat brain tumors. They have a very short range, only about two millimeters. And this is important because it restricts the radiation to the tumor and greatly limits any exposure of normal tissues, including surrounding normal brain, as I will show you later. In order to link the radioisotope lutetium-177 to the gold nanoparticles, we use a metal chelating polymer that is synthesized by our collaborator, Professor Mitch Winnick in the chemistry department at the University of Toronto. The polymer is first complex to lutetium-177 and then is attached to the gold nanoparticles. For treatment of GBM, we infuse about 400 billion individual gold nanoparticles bound to a very small amount of lutetium-177 into tumors in the brain and mice, as I will show you a bit later. This slide shows how we tested the radiation nanomedicine for treatment of GBM tumors in mice. First, the human GBM tumor was established by inoculation of human GBM cells into the brain of an anesthetized mouse. About two weeks later, when a small tumor had formed, we then infused the gold nanoparticles bound to lutetium-177 directly into the tumor. We monitored the mice for up to 21 weeks to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment for stopping tumor growth and also for improving the survival of the mice. We also determined the tumor and normal tissue uptake of the radiation nanomedicine and evaluated its normal tissue toxicity. In this study, we used several different types of small animal imaging in order to study the radiation nanomedicine and its effectiveness that I will explain on the next few slides. So firstly, we used a type of nuclear medicine imaging called SPECT, as well as biodistribution studies to determine if the radiation nanomedicine remained at the site in the brain where we infused it into the tumor. The radioisotope lutetium-177 can be imaged by SPECT. The images at the top of this slide show that yes, the radiation nanomedicine was strongly retained in the brain where we infused it at the site of the tumor. There was little to no distribution to other regions of the brain or organs outside the brain. This was confirmed by biodistribution studies as shown in the graph at the bottom where there was 100 times more radiation in the right side of the brain where the tumor was located compared to the left side of the brain that is normal. This is fantastic because it means that the radiation nanomedicine will only irradiate the area of the brain where the tumor is located, especially since the beta particles, as I mentioned, have such a short range, only about two millimeters. It will not irradiate the normal surrounding brain or any normal organs outside the brain. One interesting type of imaging that we used in this study is called bioluminescence imaging, or BLI. The tumor cells that we inoculated into the brain of the mice have been modified to express a protein called luciferase. This is the same protein that causes fireflies to glow in the night sky. Thus, if we place the mice into a dark box in the BLI imaging system, the tumor in the brain glows, and we can see the intensity of the signal to measure the tumor size. So you can see in the images at the top of the slide that all five untreated mice had tumors in the brain that grow, glowed strongly by BLI. Similarly, all five mice treated with gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope, another control, had tumors in the brain that glowed strongly in all five mice. However, of the five mice that we treated with the radiation nanomedicine, only one mouse has any signal by BLI, and this is a very weak and small signal indicating that four out of the five mice uh, have no uh, evidence of tumor by BLI imaging. As mentioned, we also can measure the signal in the brain by BLI, and this is plotted in the graph at the bottom. As you can see, 
There is no signal at any time in mice that were treated with the radiation nanomedicine. Whereas my, the untreated mice or mice treated with the gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope exhibited a rapidly increasing signal indicating rapidly growing GBM tumors in the brain. These are exciting and promising results for treatment of GBM tumors in the brain in mice with the radiation nanomedicine. We also obtained MRI scans of the brain in mice treated with the radiation nanomedicine or in control untreated mice or mice treated with gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope. As you can see in the images at the top left of this slide, untreated mice and mice treated with gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope develop very large GBM tumors in the brain. However, there was no evidence of GBM tumor in the brain in mice treated with the radiation nanomedicine. We can also measure the size of the tumors in the brain by MRI, as shown in the graph at the bottom right. You can see that the tumor size was almost zero in mice treated with the radiation nanomedicine, while control mice had much larger tumors. We also stained the brain of the mice at the end of the study uh, to detect GBM tumors, as shown at the top right. While untreated mice had very large uh, GBM tumors in the brain, mice treated with the radiation nanomedicine showed no evidence of tumor in the brain. Again, these results are extremely exciting and promising for treatment of GBM in mice with the radiation nanomedicine. We also followed the survival of the mice. Five out of eight mice with GBM tumors treated with the radiation nanomedicine survived for more than 150 days, while all untreated mice died within 39 days, and all mice treated with gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope died within 45 days. The radiation nanomedicine was not harmful to normal tissues. All mice treated with the radiation nanomedicine gained weight, as you can see in the graph at the left, indicating good health, in contrast, mice, uh, untreated mice or mice treated with gold nanoparticles without the radioisotope lost more than 20% of their weight within six weeks due to poor health due to the large GBM tumors. We found no decrease in blood cell counts or evidence of liver or kidney toxicity in blood tests from mice <clears throat> uh, that were administered either the radiation nanomedicine or received uh, no treatment indicating no toxicity to normal tissues that we can detect. We also estimated the radiation doses deposited in the tumor and normal brain. These doses are measured in a unit called gray. The tumor received 100 times more radiation dose than the surrounding normal brain, 600 gray versus six gray. Other normal regions of the brain received even lower doses of 0.2 gray to 0.3 gray. This means that the toxicity to normal brain from the radiation should be very low, and we found no evidence of toxicity to the normal brain at the end of the study uh, through histological testing. Radiation toxicity to the normal brain is a serious limiting factor for the use of other forms of radiation currently used to treat brain tumors, but does not appear to be limiting for the radiation nanomedicine. So what do these results mean for patients with GBM? Firstly, the radiation nanomedicine could be used to treat residual tumor in the brain after surgery in order to prevent recurrence and improve patient outcome. In addition, since the radiation nanomedicine was not harmful to normal tissues, including normal brain, it could potentially be combined with existing treatments for GBM to further improve patient survival without increasing toxicity. We are continuing to study the radiation nanomedicine now, combined with a class of drugs uh, called checkpoint immunotherapy. This is a new class of drugs that's been introduced to treat cancer in the last five to 10 years. The idea is to recruit the immune system in order to kill any remaining tumor cells that are left behind after the radiation nanomedicine treatment. We are also continuing to assess the toxicity on normal brain using cognitive function tests in mice. 
since radiation treatment of GBM has been associated with decreased cognitive function in patients. We are also developing a second generation form of the radiation nanomedicine, which is composed of gold nanoparticles that incorporate a radioisotope of gold, gold 198, that should produce a more stable formulation and be more easily advanced to human studies. Our goal is to advance the radiation nanomedicine to a clinical trial in the future for treatment of patients with GBM. And we have recently built a good manufacturing practices or GMP facility at the University of Toronto, which will allow us to prepare human quality radiation nanomedicine for these uh, studies. If you're interested to learn more about our studies to develop a radiation nanomedicine for GBM, we recently published this work in the journal Molecular Pharmaceutics. I would like to acknowledge the members of my team and my collaborators who made this research possible. The studies of the radiation nanomedicine for treating GBM uh, is the work of Konstantin Giorgio, a PhD student in my group, and Dr. Zongli Kai, a senior research associate. The metal chelating polymers that we use to uh, radio label the gold nanoparticles were synthesized by Hongjun Cho, a PhD student and Professor Mitch Winnick's uh, group at the University of Toronto. This project is a collaboration with Dr. Uh, James Rutka, who is a neurosurgeon at the Hospital for Sick Children, who treats patients with GBM and has advised us on the project. His PhD student, Carlin Figueredo, uh, taught our group how to establish GBM tumors in the brain in mice, because it was actually the first time that we had ever worked on developing a new treatment for GBM. This research was initiated by a pilot research grant from the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada, and this allowed us to obtain additional funding from the Canadian Cancer Society. Finally, I would like to thank the uh, staff at the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada for all their efforts in raising funds and the individuals who generously donated to the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada that allowed us to test this new idea for radiation nanomedicine for treating brain tumors. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, um, you could forward those to the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada and they will reach out to me uh, to, uh, for an answer for you. Thank you so much for your attention.